Hello, I've got a couple. I'm trying to use a lapel microphone today. Can you guys hear me? Yo. <clears throat> Can you guys hear me a little bit better this time? I know we've got some like more stuff going on in the background. There's people landscaping and stuff like that. So, all right, sounds like my little lapel microphone is going well today. That makes me happy. We'll give it a couple minutes for some people to start chiming in and then we'll and then we'll get started in a few minutes. There's some white noise, background noise. There's going to be some white noise because there's people like mowing the lawn over there. But as long as it's not too distracting, then I'll just hang out out here. Yeah. I think my dog is joining us for today's stream. So, yeah, six shades. Wait another minute or two for a couple people to join us. <clears throat> Is the white noise too much? If it's too loud, I'll go inside. But if the, if the white noise isn't really bothering anybody, then I'll hang out out here, give my family a little space to do their thing. Okay, cool. Once we get to 50 people, then I'll, I'll hang out. Oh, we'll get started. My dog's name is Snoofer, by the way. Yeah, Goldens are probably the best dog we're ever going to have. So we're going to have plenty of them, I'm sure, my wife and I. Thanks for the, all those first timers. So, uh, is my wife's boyfriend still living with us? No, her girlfriend is though, which is nice. All right, we got 48, so we'll give it a couple more for a few more people to join in, and then we'll get started. And today's live stream topic is gonna be at the request of the Centurions, because the Centurions get first licks, and they're asking how do we trade, you know, how do we actively trade when we don't really have time to keep chiming in every day, checking our positions, what strategies should we use? Um, you know, we've got people with actual jobs. I know most of the people that follow me are all um, like college students and things like that. The lawnmower is getting really loud. And people that have plenty of time. But what about those of us that are actually adults? Or those college students will eventually become adults and get real jobs, and then they won't have time all day to keep checking positions. So what strategies should we use? So we'll, uh, all right, we've got 56. My dog is still bugging me, but that's okay, we'll go ahead and get started. So when uh, Nayo, the centurion that brought up this question, asked me, he says, because he's doing a lot of construction work, he's not even allowed to have his phone half the time, and if he does, it's risk. So how can he afford to put his phone down for hours at a time, step away from a computer, and then, uh, and then you know, still end up making money without having to constantly monitor his positions? So, I mean, there's a couple of obvious choices there, and then a couple that aren't so obvious. So the first thing I wanna show you is the S&P's price performance since 1993, based on when you hold these, when you hold positions and when you do not. So if you look at the big blue line at the top, the obvious one that's outperforming everything else, that is what happens if you buy all of your positions at the close of every day. You put shares in your portfolio at 3.59 p.m. This dog is like, keep shoving my arm. <clears throat> it's bothering me. If you open all of your positions to hold shares at like 3.59 p.m. every day, and then you immediately sell at 9.31 in the morning, if you only hold positions overnight, then you will, get, you will receive that blue line in returns. Uh, if you buy and hold forever, you're not worried about timing, the opening and the closing at all, you're getting that greenish bluish line in the center. And if you only hold shares, throughout the day and you do not hold any shares overnight, you close every day, you're just day trading shares, then that yellow line down the bottom is what happened since 1993. All right, so what does this mean for the active trader? That means that under all circumstances, you want to hold shares in your portfolio. Don't try to get that blue line by you know closing every morning and opening up at the very end of the day. Don't try to do that. But what you don't want to do as an active trader is to try to time the market with your buys and your sells because then you're going to end up experiencing that yellow line where you're only, only, um, only trading during the day. You need that overnight exposure. It rockets up in the morning and then stays flat through the rest of the day. But then overnight, you tend to see those rises again. Going into the next day, traders are fresh, investors want more exposure. You need to have that overnight uh, exposure to stocks. So as an active trader, no matter how much you want to get into options, 
I strongly recommend you have at least half of your portfolio into something like Triple Q or SPY or a leveraged ETF. Have your, at least half your money in that. So even if you don't have time to continuously put all your money toward investments, you've at least got some of that long-term exposure overnight. All right, that's my first recommendation. But we're not here to just buy and hold stocks because if we were, then, I mean, what's the point of even being interested in options if you're just gonna buy Triple Q and sit on it? All right, so let's talk about other ways that you can invest as an active person without having to worry about um, constantly checking your positions. All right, so here's a couple things that I recommend you don't do. So these are the strategies that require constant attention. And if you don't have time to monitor your positions, you're gonna end up in a position where you're just losing money. And you don't have time to exit, you're not able to take advantage of good exits, you're not able to see when it's time to get into a position. All right, and a lot of these, if you wait until, these are uh, the top two are spreads. If you're not monitoring these spreads, then you'll get burned, all right? So we've got the short straddle at the top. That one is if you sell a call and a put at the same strike with the same expiration, but you don't buy any hedges against it. So you're just selling a naked call and a naked put. Those ones can be going well for weeks. And then at the very last day before expiration, the stock goes up or down 10%, you're going to get burned. So stay away from the short straddle if you don't have time to monitor the positions. Most of the time, it's best to get in and out of these at about a, you want to get out at a 50% gain if you can get a short straddle, all right? The next one is the short strangle. Very similar to the short straddle, except in a short strangle, you're not selling the call and the put at the same strikes. You're selling them at different strikes. It can be very lucrative. It's a pretty conservative strategy, but again, you're not buying calls and puts on either end of it. So you have unlimited risk in both the short strangle and the short straddle. If you're not monitoring and you're not able to close at 50% gain, then you're gonna miss those exits. If you're not monitoring and you start going down, the stock moves way against you, you're gonna end up bag holding and you're gonna suffer that massive, massive loss once expiration does come. So these positions that require management are not good. And likewise, you know, I never really recommend getting into penny stocks, but I know a lot of you guys do it anyway. I started with penny stocks. If you're buying penny stocks, you gotta be ready to get back out because penny stocks are not those, you can get 100 shares for a dollar, like they're one penny each. Those companies are trash. So you don't wanna actually be holding them long-term. And when the stock does go flying 300% in a day, which sometimes happens, you gotta be ready to sell. Right? You don't wanna end up, you know, you look back you know, you know, at the end of the day and you see, all right, my penny stock went up 500% and then crashed back down because it was a pump and dump. If you're doing penny stocks, you wanna be constantly monitoring those positions and you wanna be able to time your exits when you see those massive gains on the top. So that's what you don't do. You don't do the short strangle, you don't do the short straddle, and you don't do penny stocks because those require constant management. And if you're actively, uh, you know, you're out there, you're working, maybe you work in a place where you can't bring your phone like I do, then it's not the right positions to be using. All right, so what should we use then? What can we use? All right, I've said already, buy and hold is probably gonna outperform most people anyway. So buy and hold is a very good one. The next is leaps. I've brought up leaps several times. I'm making a video on it. Right, but leaps are a way that you can, rather than uh, just buying and holding shares, which can be very expensive, you use leaps where you're buying a very long dated call. So you have a call that doesn't expire for two, sometimes three years away. And that would cost you a fraction of what it would cost to get equal exposure by buying shares. So you, we know that 100 shares um, gives you a delta of one. Every dollar a stock goes up, you'll make a hundred bucks. Every dollar goes down, you'll lose a hundred bucks. With a leap, you can get a delta of one by buying multiple 0.5 delta uh, calls. And instead of costing you the price of a hundred shares, you can get those two calls for maybe three quarters, maybe even less than that, sometimes half the price of a hundred shares. So essentially, you only need to buy, what it, you only need enough money for 50 shares, but by using leaps, you can get the equivalent gain and loss of 100 shares. All right, that's very good for those long-term bullish positions like ETFs. I've got leaps on, um, on Apple right now. I've got a leap on Triple Q, and I've got three leaps on SPY. And I'm buying into those long-term leaps will give you a lot of exposure to the underlying without having to um, put up all the money that would cost you to buy shares. So a question came in, do I recommend getting a leap one year, two years, three years? 
if you are bullish long term, like I'm bullish on Triple Q long term, I'm going to buy a leap as far dated as I can. Because the difference between one year and two years on a leap is like 10%. You'll get an entire, in terms of price. So where a, a leap on Triple Q would cost you, you know, $2,000 if it's expiring two years from now, a leap expiring three years from now, $2,200. You put up that extra 200 bucks, you get an entire two years of additional exposure. So I buy the leap as far out as I can. I am making a video on that, I promise. I need to make one on some of the Greeks first, which I've already, I've already started. So a leap, so Control FU asks, a leap is just a hella far out option? Yes, basically. But you want your leap to have a high delta, so you're not buying FDs long term. You're buying FDs, you're not buying FDs long term, you're buying at the money or in the money calls and puts mostly. Let's move on from leaps now, we'll come back to that at the end if you guys want to ask questions about leaps. All right, the next one that I recommend if you're an active trader but you want to make some money, all right, lotto flies are a good opportunity. Lotto flies are an iron fly, so iron butterfly, that has very, very tight wings. So you're talking maybe 50 cents wide on strikes that would, um, you've got 50 cent wide strikes on a very, very volatile option. So like Tesla, for example, you want to buy a call and a put or you, I'm sorry, you want to sell a call and a put on Tesla at the same strike, the $2,000 strike. And then you're going to buy your wings at 1995 and 2005. The chance of profitability is very, very low, but it's only going to cost you like a hundred bucks, probably even less, more like $20 to enter that position. A lotto fly is a very low cost iron butterfly, but imagine if Tesla were to land exactly at $2,000 on your expiration date. It costs you twenty thousand dollars or I'm sorry twenty dollars to enter this position but you've got a short call and a short put expiring exactly at the money you're gonna pull all of that premium out of it so if you guys saw the video about me eating grass that's because somebody else in one of the chats he had bought uh, he had entered a lotto fly with sixty dollars of collateral only uh, and then it um, and then when the lotto fly struck it was exactly it was very very close to his short call and a short put he ended up pulling like $2,000 out of a $60 bet. Like I said, low probability of profit because you need that iron flow. You need the strike to be exactly where the stock ends up on expiration date. But if you hit it, all right, it only costs you 60 bucks to enter and you could pull out sometimes 10 times, 20 times more than what it costs you to enter the trade. If you're an active trader and you're willing to let something like that ride, that's a good alternative to doing the things like penny stocks or straddles. Use lotto flies instead, and you'll end up pulling some of those big wins if you can pull it off, which is low probability, but it's only going to cost you 60 bucks at a time, and you can start walking away with $2,000 of gains. All right, and the last one, credit spreads. All right, so you're talking call credit spreads, credit spreads, iron condors. If, you know, so you've got a, I've got a star next to it. If you have enough time based on your schedule that you can start monitoring those things at 50% gain, you want to take it off at 50%, then you, are, uh, then you should do those. Zizi asked me, can I do a tutorial on the PMC? I'm sorry, the comment went away too fast. I couldn't read it. Thank you so much for the super chat. Um, type that comment again, just as you had it, and I will read it and answer it this time. They just, they go away so fast on, on YouTube. Um, thank you for the super chat. Please send that one again, just as a regular chat, and I'll, I'll read it as soon as it comes across the screen. Um, while we wait for him to do that, um, what I was saying about the credit spreads is if you have enough opportunity to manage, to look at your phone or your, your brokerage and manage those trades at 50% gain. All right, you've got a week long trade. If on Wednesday you're up 50%, you wanna take that trade off. Okay, you want to take, because toward the end of the week, those deltas can get very, very high. Your thetas really start kicking and the trades, credit spreads become very volatile in the days leading up to expiration. All right, so only trade the credit spreads as an active person with a real job if you feel like you're going to have enough time to monitor your position adequately so you can exit at 50%. I would still recommend checking in at least halfway through the length of a credit spread and look for that opportunity to exit. If you can't do that, don't trade credit spreads because by the end of the week you could end up getting shanked by one bad day, which is kind of what happened to me on my, uh, I'm not going to give you spoilers, but that happened to me recently and I'm still recovering from it mentally. Um, guy that sent me that super chat, can I see that again? I wanted to see what question you asked, and I, oh, there it is. Can you do a tutorial on how to do a PMCC video, like how you would go about properly setting one up? 
Yes, so ZZZ is looking for a video on the poor man's covered call. Yes, I am gonna do that one. Uh, that one's in the works right now. I need to do a couple of videos on the Greeks first so that the poor man's covered call makes sense. And then once I have that, then I'm gonna do the poor man's covered call. That one's been one of my favorite strategies for uh, recovering my 3K portfolio that I blew up at the end of last season with one bad YOLO. That's been my way of getting everything back on track with that account. So people that actually, they have $3,000 accounts, that's a good opportunity to use the, uh, the poor man's covered call. That's a real good one. All right, so to quickly review what we talked about so far, a, if you're an active trader and you don't feel like you're gonna, or you are an active person, and you don't feel like you're gonna have time to be an active trader, this chart tells you a lot of what you need to know. You want exposure to shares overnight. So don't be trying to time the market if you're gonna have time to. Instead, you wanna hold shares, especially overnight, as that blue line indicates. <clears throat> All right. The strategies you should not use as an active trader are the short straddle, the short strangle, and trading any penny stocks. Those ones have unlimited risk and they require active management. If you're a person who's working in construction or you work at sea or underwater or something like that, you're not gonna have time to manage those positions. You're gonna end up suffering heavy, heavy losses if you're not paying attention. So don't trade those ones. The ones that you should trade are the leaps which I know I owe you guys a video on. Look up leaps if you're an active person, buy those. Do buy and hold strategies. If you're looking for those big gains, you wanna do lotto flies. And um, if you have the time to manage at 50%, you think you can check in often enough, then look at credit spreads for it. Those would be my recommendations to you. The most important one, the key takeaway, keep half your portfolio in ETFs. If you're buying shares of ETFs, like Triple Q or SPY, you don't have to worry about buying in and out. All you've got to do is hold overnight and you'll see that money coming through and you're probably going to outperform most of the active traders anyway. All right, so that's the key points I wanted to make about today's live stream. Um, one comment here, this is going to be the last live stream that's exclusively on YouTube. I'm going to try to simulcast a couple, but I want to eventually bring this over to Twitch because at Twitch you can actually interact with the audience a little bit more. You guys get like back and forth emojis and stuff and the comments actually stay on the screen so I can read them. Um, what we just saw prior where I had to try to go back and find out what a comment was, um, it's, not very, it's not very conducive. YouTube is not very good for live streams. So I'm gonna move it over to Twitch. I have the link to my Twitch channel in the description of this video. So please go check that out and follow. Um, that's all I really wanted to cover in this stream. Is there, are there any questions? I like fielding questions about this or any other strategy. I think I might actually be frozen here because my um, viewer count has not gone up or down in the last five minutes, which is really unusual. It's usually bouncing all over the place. Am I frozen? Is anybody still there? I'm not seeing any comments and it's usually filled. Now I'm going to back out of this one and try to set this one up again because it's kind of unusual that this, the viewer count hasn't even moved. All right, I'll be back. <clears throat>